In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this subwoofer. Let's get started. So this is a small subwoofer that I designed for use in a bedroom 2.1 Bluetooth system. It's using a Dayton Audio 8-inch subwoofer and a Dayton Audio 8-inch passive radiator. Let's jump right into the design process so I can show you how I put this thing together. Before I head out to the garage and start building a subwoofer box, or any speaker box for that matter, I always like to do a lot of planning. The more planning you do ahead of time, the better the project is going to turn out. One of the best tools for laying out a plan is a piece of software called WinISD. You can just Google WinISD. So I'm just going to pop over and do a screen capture of WinISD and show you what I'm talking about. So what I have on the screen is I've got two different versions of this box. The blue line represents a sealed enclosure, and the red line represents the passive radiator enclosure that I'm building in this particular case. And what I want to point out is just how quickly the sealed version begins to taper off. The F3 point is right here, right around 60 hertz, 58 hertz, somewhere in that vicinity. So around 58 hertz, you're down 3 decibels, which is the equivalent of losing half of your amplifier power. Really losing a lot of the bass output when you don't have a port on this particular driver. A passive radiator is just a really complicated port. So if you don't want to do passive radiators, just make it ported. I wanted to do a passive radiator because I'd never done one before, and I wanted to see what that was like to build with one. So far, it's been a blast. Let's take a look at the passive radiators extension. It has an F3 of... Uh, 36.9 uh, hertz. So around 36 hertz is where this thing's going to drop down by, by 3 decibels, which isn't fantastic, but this is a very small 8-inch driver. So this 8-inch driver is going to be able to play all the way down to 36 hertz and do so with authority. It doesn't begin to taper off until 50 hertz. In other words, the sealed version of this speaker is already out of steam about the time that the passive radiator version is thinking about slowing down. Another great tool to help design a subwoofer box or any speaker box for that matter is SketchUp. SketchUp allows you to do 3D modeling and it's really great because it allows you to really visualize what you're trying to build. You can spin the model around. Uh, I love that you can copy and paste. So you build a component of the model and if you need another component just like it, you just do a simple copy and paste. Let's jump to the screen real quick and let's take a look at the SketchUp model that I've started. I went ahead and started this off camera because honestly watching someone draw in SketchUp is just a little bit boring. And the really neat thing is that I can spin this around, look at it from different angles, see what's going on inside of my model, and I can use the measurement tool to grab measurements at any point that I want. And that's going to come in real handy when I start building my cut list. I know, for example, I'm going to need some 21 inch pieces and some 21 inch by 11 pieces, specifically three of those, two for the baffle, one for the back. And then I'm going to need a bottom piece, which is also 21 inches by eight and three quarters inches. Let me go ahead and finish up my quick model right here by just showing you how easy it is to copy and paste. I've got a side piece right here, which is, I think it's 10 and a half inches. Let me measure it so that I know for sure, so that when I'm ready to start cutting my wood, I, I don't mess it up. So this, this side piece is 10 inches. I'm glad I double checked. That's what it's there for. So I know I'm going to need two of these side pieces that are 10 by eight and three quarters. Uh, five pieces total that are 21 inches long. Three of those need to be 11 inches, and two of those need to be 8 and 3 quarters. So I've got my cut sheet already laid out in front of me. I just have to write that down on a piece of paper and head out to the saw and start cutting. So just quickly and easily, I'm going to do a quick copy-paste. Control-C to copy, Control-V to paste. And now I've got an extra end piece ready to go that I can just take and move to where I need it and the box is almost complete. Let me take that bottom piece and copy and paste that and put it in position. And I've got my completed box. Now I can make this SketchUp design just as complicated as I want it to be and I can add all kinds of elements. I can draw circles uh, for the cutouts for the speaker, for the cutouts for the um, speaker terminal, the wire terminal, the terminal cup that I'm going to be using. 
tons of things I can do. I can draw my bracing inside this box and then I can take all the measurements that I need off of my drawings and basically construct some measured drawings. And you know, you know, wood can be really expensive and you can burn through a lot of material making mistakes. So it's really smart to go ahead and draw everything out. Now, another important trick is to always kind of plan your cuts when you start cutting down your sheet goods in order to make your enclosure. Here's what I mean by that. I've got a total of five pieces that are going to be 21 inches long. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a 21 inch cut. And then I'm going to take that 21 inch cut and rip it down into my three 11 inch pieces for my back, my baffle and my second baffle because I'm going to do a double baffle. And then I can do another cut at eight and three quarters to do the bottoms and the tops. Then keep the saw at eight and three quarters and make a cut for the sides and finally move the saw to 10 inches for the other side cut. The idea is to cut everything that's going to be 21 inches at the exact same time. Another hint is to make a couple of extra pieces for when you mess up, because guess what you're going to do? You're going to mess up because I mess up. Everyone messes up. And if you're not messing up, you're not trying hard enough. The material that I'm using is one half inch MDF with a birch veneer. This is a bunch of scrap pieces that a local cabinet shop uh, got rid of one day. They just put an ad on Facebook Marketplace, free cabinet grade sheet goods, come and get it. The board that I'm working with is um, eight foot long and I think about 14 or 15 inches across. So I ended up uh, you know, sourcing this and using this and having to make some very unsafe cuts with the table saw. The distance from the fence to the blade should never be greater than the distance from the front to the back of the piece that you're cutting. So my cuts were a little bit sloppy to begin with. I set the saw at 22 inches and made some rough cuts and then went back and trimmed them down to 21 inches when I could make a safer cut. And you'll also notice that my table saw is not sitting on a very sturdy surface as I make these cuts. Uh, so I'm, I've pretty much broken every table saw safety rule on the planet, but I've got my riving knife installed and my blade guard installed, and I went slow and steady and careful. I uh, went ahead and made a bunch of extra pieces. I probably cut about twice of what I actually needed, knowing that I was going to make these cuts at 21 inches and not come come back to them. I then set the fence to 11 inches, and I ripped the two baffles on the front and the rear to 11 inches by 21 inches and I made a couple of extra pieces just because I had plenty of scrap material laying around since this entire enclosure is being made out of scrap. After that I set the fence to 10 inches and I ripped uh, the pieces that are going to become the, the side pieces and then finally set the fence to 8 and 3 quarters and ripped the top and the bottom and finished sizing the side pieces. I went ahead and made an extra side piece or two for a a window brace that I'm going to be putting inside of the enclosure and of course I always like to make a couple of extra pieces because I tend to mess things up and make a lot of mistakes. So off camera I made two cutouts with my Jasper circle jig. The first one is a 7 and 3 16 and the other one is a 7 and a quarter cutout. The woofer requires a 7.2 inch cutout, which is neither of the sizes that we have here. So I made these test cuts to verify that when I went to make the actual cuts, I would have something that would fit correctly. And the 7 and 3 16 doesn't fit quite right. You can see that there in the video that it's kind of wobbly back and forth. So let's try it on the 7 and a quarter inch hole in this scrap piece of material. And it fits perfect. There's no slop. It's not wiggling back and forth at all. So a seven and a quarter inch is actually a better cutout for this woofer. So let's try out the passive radiator in the seven and three sixteen inch cutout. As you can see, it fits just perfectly inside of the smaller hole. And it fits just fine in the larger hole. It's got a little bit of a wiggle back and forth, but not so bad that you're gonna miss the, uh, the bolt circles. Uh, in this scenario so either either one works just fine so I'm gonna make two seven and a quarter inch holes in the final piece so I've got my workpiece measured out I've got the Jasper circle jig all set up you just drill a hole in the center and then drop this pin through the circle jig making sure you put it in the right spot on the jig uh, plug in the router hit the button plunge it and cut a circle it's a pretty straightforward thing to do 
it was a little intimidating the first time that I ever used it. But now that I've used it a couple of times, it's about the most straightforward, easy way to cut a circle. If you want to see more videos on tools and more specific how to and details on how to how I'm cutting the wood on the table saw and how I'm uh, setting up the circle jig and making the cuts, let me know in the comments. I'm just assuming now that you don't want to see huge amounts of detail on how I make these uh, these cuts and stuff, that you really want to see me get to assembling the product and, and showing you the final piece of work. Now it's time for the assembly part. This is my favorite part because this is the part where it feels like you're really making some progress and it feels like you're actually building uh, an enclosure. So I've already attached the bottom and the rear and now I'm going to attach one of the sides. So we just slather on a whole bunch of glue, make sure it's nice and steady, position the side piece correctly, hold it in place real tight. Sometimes I use clamps right here at this point to make sure I've got everything nice and secure, but today I'm just going to hold it together with my hands and drive some brad nails. So I've gone ahead and installed the second side and now I'm getting ready to attach the baffle. It's a double baffle with uh, speaker cutouts that are recessed into the second baffle. The game plan is to build some grills to go into these baffles. More on that later. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and look for a playlist if you want to see how I build those grills. And again, this is a very satisfying part of the build where I'm just going to slather things with glue and start tacking down that baffle with my brad nails. Now we are in the home stretch. I've secured a window brace in the center of the box and I'm now attaching the very top of the box. It's a huge mess. I've got glue everywhere, but again, it's really satisfying to see this box finally come together. This is the last step and this is the part where I start to get really super excited because now technically all you've got to do is put the speakers in and wire it up and it can play some music. The problem of course is that it doesn't look very good at this point. So we're all done but we're not finished yet. There's still a lot of work left to do to make this look nice. It's not quite ready to put on display in your living room or in your bedroom. There's plenty of fine details that need to be addressed before this thing is really considered to be a finished product. So if you would, like and subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of the build, which I'm going to put in a playlist. Thank you so much for watching me build this box. I hope you enjoyed.